Salutations, nerds! We're watching the MCU and all its glory. Welcome back to Phased Out, uh, the podcast. Uh, sorry, brain. Welcome back to Phased Out. Uh, we're off Slate Media. I'm Jake. That's Jared. That's Ooh. Nick. Uh, this show designed to make Nick hate us because we hate these movies and we're so tired. Of them, especially yeah. after this week. Yes, uh, this week, two of my favorites. Really? No, uh, one of my favorites. Okay, I'd buy um, that. I'd buy that for a dollar. Yeah. Um, so this week we're covering Ant Man. Um, plot twist: This is not one of my favorites. <laughs> Diet right, as Jared <laughs> likes to call it. Um, you started that. I started that? When we rewatched it back in 2019. I must have blanked. You what? said it, and I liked it so much. I've said it for the last five years, and so I think you just ret- retroactively uh, attribute it to me. I think I you. just blacked out that entire viewing of it. I used to like this movie. I used to feel like it was like a, a like a, it was fresh again, like the Iron Man, like the first Iron Man. Because? It's basically a horrible version of Iron Man. It's not horrible. I think the movie's good. Um, I but think like it, everybody has said, uh, the villain is terrible in this movie. Um, and then he becomes even worse. Somehow. Somehow he got worse. <laughs> I mean, did, I mean, you, spoilers, he's MODOK. Um, Shocker. <laughs> does that really shock you that that got worse? I mean... <laughs> I don't think there's a universe where you do a live action Modoc and it works. That's fair. Really. Like that unless, character is unless dumb you and do, silly. Unless you do in I a Guardians movie, maybe. Unless you do like a instead of a stretch head on the thing, it's in like a jar sort of or situation. Digitize it or something like. But what they did, mm-hmm. no. Mm-hmm. Uh, but back to this movie. Um, I think uh, unlike Ant Man and Quantumania, I think the CG in this movie. Uh, especially compared to the one we talk about next week, holds up extremely well, uh, which I didn't think it was going to on this one because it's smaller scale. I think exactly. You don't have to. <laughs> I think I, I think I much. agree with that. Like that record scene, I really that was well. The whole sequence. It's one that's, of the coolest the, scenes the in the MCU. The bathtub. I think the record. Yeah. I think that there is a lot of potential in the like. I know that there is a lot of potential in the Ant Man concept, and by very fact that he's controlling ants and riding ants. There's a lot of more comic bookiness to it, and I think that's part of why I liked it originally too. The problem is, it's just so boring. The my thing is, it's not a boring movie, but every time I start to have fun, they make sure to put something boring in there to stop that fun. Anytime we go to Darren, I am so bored. But anytime <laughs> we're anytime we're with uh, Michael Pena and the crew, uh, early David Smulchin before people started knowing his name. Um, <laughs> I'm having a blast. I will say I did like Luis better than I have ever before. Because remember, I used to not like. I also, uh, this is not a fault of the movie. Really, really don't like Evangeline Lilly. No. Yes, and that's because of, he has lost trauma. Yeah. I just don't like Everything her in she's in, she has a daddy issue. She doesn't have a daddy issue in The Hobbit. Not that kind of daddy. <laughs> yeah. She's not as bad as Liv Tyler for me. Um, what are you talking about? But yeah, but she. We don't know. That's it's why wrong. they cast her in the Hobbit. They needed a Liv Tyler type. Yeah, that's exactly. literally it. They couldn't find an Orlando Bloom type, so they just brought him back. But, I mean, that man is still good looking. That's true. Not that it, not that Evangeline and Liv Tyler aren't good no. looking still. Just we're saying. Yeah, I I don't mind Evangeline Lilly in the second movie. I think she gets a lot more play, and she's allowed to do. Some you talking about the, the haircut gets better. About the wasp? The hair, yeah, the haircut gets better. Um, but this one, I hate the whole "I hate my dad" thing. I hate. But it's not there at all. I know it's like, that's the thing. It's, it's fake, not there. It's but it isn't. Yeah, it's like, weird. She's frustrated with him, and like used to hate him, but doesn't anymore. Like I understand her frustration. Like they did give me enough of that. Like I understand that she's mad. That he won't tell her what happened to her mom. Yeah, and like, like, I get that from like a character perspective. And I also get like, like they never really made up. She's working with him because Darren's crossing lines and she needs to stop him. And her dad's the only one that can feasibly do that. Mm. Uh, so she doesn't want to be there. But like, if you're gonna be there, make up with your dad, my guy. Uh, well, you know what they should have done? They shouldn't have started the movie with oh, 
she, they're already working together. Yeah. It should have been she's on Darren's side and halfway through the movie when the tech when the, it's revealed that he has the tech and it's pushing the sta- the stakes are there and it's pushing the story forward. Yep. That's when she goes to Hank. It's not like they're they're not used to doing this in the MCU. Yeah. Like, that's been Natasha the entire time. Yeah. Like just write her for this little part of the movie like you would Natasha as like a double life. But no. It's just kinda out there in the open like you said. Which or not not even a I double think, life. I mean she's fully on Darren's side, but then when she oh, sees what he's going oh, for let's actually then see you the have twist. the turn. Yeah. She goes to tell him and they're still at odds. So then that scene where all three of them are there and like Darren calls her because yeah. he's in the other room has more at stake because she's not only is she not supposed to be there, like she you never would have imagined her being there. Yeah. And so then when you progress, that's when they solve their issues together in the third act. It's not it's it's screenwriting one on one. There's a world where we don't even know that she's Hank's daughter until halfway through the movie. We see the animosity there, we just think, Oh, that's Darren's assistant, hates him. Um, used we to might, run the, we used might, to run the company, yeah. maybe, but I mean, if you're a comic book person, you're gonna know who Hope Van Dyne is. And them holding uh, out <laughs> on that twist would have been a little lame. It's like, yeah, I'm his daughter, and then everyone's gonna be like, but isn't oh, that of very course. Yes. <laughs> I, I kind of wish that we wouldn't have gotten like the horrible de aging scene. Oh, to beginning. start? Yeah, I think we should have started with him losing um, Michelle Pfeiffer. I don't know the name. Of so it. not reveal it, yeah. show it. Show but it. we don't know who that is. But we don't we know just... what happens to her. And then maybe somehow he loses the tech and we're wondering where that is. And then it's... I just... Three heists in this movie is too much. I actually like all the heists in this movie. Um, but I agree. Uh, at, on the third one, I was like, this is fun. Yeah. But like we've been through <laughs> we've been yeah. through this. Like, it, like, it's still it, a really good it, scene, it, but it's it like, contribu- all right. <laughs> like... It contributes to the... The boringness of it, like yeah. it's just very repetitive. So the three heists would be him breaking into the safe, him going to the Avengers complex, mm-hmm. and then the end. And again, I yes. love all okay. three of those scenes. Which the th- second one's not as much of a heist. It's just he banter's with Falcon, beats he, the crap out of them, and then just <laughs> takes the thing. Yeah. It's See, not even then, a heist. It's, he it's just not steals. even a scene. It's just there to and like, hey, uh, they know each other for a reason to be in the next one. <laughs> there's so much fun to the idea of how Ant Man fights. Like, they did not push hard enough into that yeah. visually at all. Oh, he like, can get big and little. Really what does do. he do? He punches people. <laughs> it's just like it's what funny. we say. That's all they do. But it's you like, know how I love those perspective change jokes? I still yeah. laugh at the Thomas the Train thing. Yeah, and I'm cool with all that stuff. But I also want, like, I want the fight scenes to be similar to that first time we see him go small. I want to see his perspective of the world being massive and yeah. just... Like overstimulating and overwhelming, I even think, though he's in control. Like it, I want I us think to that, feel that way. I think that that's one thing they did very well, is particularly in the bathtub, mm-hmm. just making it all seem very overwhelming. The scale of it. But yeah. like, can you imagine if you if there was like a scene where you shrunk down with, can't remember his name, Scott, mm-hmm. and then you see you watch him go up to punch this giant face or whatever and then the perspective just changes and you see the person he's punching fly like that would yeah. just make me laugh and you know who would have done that i Over was right. gonna go yeah <laughs> so let's let's take you back in time to 2019 when jake and i as we've said every single episode and we'll continue to do so until endgame sitting in his living room about to start this him being pro ant-man and me having only seen it once with like family at like a th- at like Thanksgiving years a couple years before and just sitting there like this is bad and then we get to the end and he's sitting there and he's like leaning forward and he's got it he's got his fist balled up on his lap he's just I could see it Jake Jake Jared I could see it, Jared what, what? he's attributing it to himself yeah. too I could see where it's supposed to be <laughs> I go where's what the Edgar Wright stuff. It's not even subtle. Like I can see where it's supposed to be his movie in the movie. They just they, they just took his like what he had and then just slapped the, slapped the MCU label on it, mm-hmm. but took out all the interesting stuff. And now every time I've seen it, or it think of it or see scenes, I go, yeah, like that. Like that should have been a tra- an Edgar Wright transition right there. It's just dead space. Mm-hmm. I think like the hard cut to Baskin Robbins is the first one where it's like I get how the joke's timed. It's kind of funny, but. Edgar Wright would have had something. If they would have let him write this, it would have been better. 
It wouldn't have fit their vision, and I understand why they didn't want him to make a good movie. But, but at this point, you know are we I mean? still in the era of letting directors be who they want to be in the MCU? We're or not even... We... Because I feel we like... We kind in... of only tested the waters with James Gunn at this point. Uh, a little bit with the Russos, because they have a bit of a track record with them. Um, but not really. We're talking directors with style. Oh. I'm sorry. I just like to, to <laughs> joke like, on okay, them because... The Russo movies are my favorite movies in the series. Uh. <laughs> I mean, there's what six or seven of them? Four. Four? No, they did Civil War, right? Yeah, they yeah. Did two so, cat movies and two Avengers. Yeah. Oh, I thought they did more than. Maybe okay. I'm thinking of David Yates with Harry Potter. Maybe. Which, <laughs> yeah, what did he do? It's this, it, it's it. he did everything after five, I think. Five, six. So seven, he did three, one, seven, and then two. he's done all the. Is it him that's done all the Fantastic Beasts? Yeah. So he's done six Wizarding World movies. I feel bad for that man for all the chaos of those series that he had to deal with. I don't feel bad for him because he got paid. I don't think And he could have left at any time. Yeah. I don't think that they're going to make that third Fantastic Beast movie. Fourth? Fourth. There are three. Mm Mm-hmm. Crazy, right? No. That third one kind of came and went, didn't it? Yeah. What was that, 2022? Yeah, as in the middle of the wait, death wait, trial. wait, 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 Fantastic Beast. Yep, and where to find them? Yeah, Crimes of Grindelwald. Yep, and then uh, uh, Secrets of Dumbledore. Yeah, where Ma- where Mads Mikkelsen oh, replaced Johnny yeah, Depp. Oh yeah, Jude Law's Remember? Dumbledore. Yeah. Remember? That's uh, yep. right. Johnny Depp trial. They pulled him out of it. Why did they take? Why did they replace Colin Farrell for Johnny Depp? Why didn't they just bring it back to Colin Farrell? Why did they just not make it? And have Eddie Redmayne I, twitching on screen every time love, they cut to him that. like I, this. I, I love that first movie. I'm well, okay. I I'm okay. Movie, uh, the I think one. Colin. I think Colin Farrell is a much better villain. He's way more menacing. I don't know if you've ever seen the oh, remake yeah. of Fright Night, but dude, that what a crazy pull! But I love that movie. Fright but, Night, uh, <laughs> Daredevil. One of my That's favorite David Colin Tennant Farrell. performances of all time. Uh, that especially movie as is a, so good. Especially as somebody who loves the original Fright Night, that movie did not get enough love when it came out. <laughs> No, it did not. So I don't. Good. I don't like. Ho- I don't Wasn't like that, horror movies. I is that love Craig that. Craig Gillespie who directed that I Fright think Night. So. Is that Anton Yelman as the main kid? Yeah. Yeah, the dude that got such, ran over by such a good pedigree feet. for that yeah. movie, and nobody saw it. I think it's Craig Gillespie because then he did yeah. I Tanya, Cruella, yep. and a bunch of stuff. Uh, what was it? Pam and Tommy. I can't remember who the mom was. But I feel like she was also somebody. It's like I think that's a huge yeah. cast. But yeah. 2011, a lot of them weren't big yet. Yeah, Colin Farrell would have been the biggest name on there. And still is, obviously, but the other ones would have pulled. That had to be around the time Tenet was the Doctor, right? It was. Uh, they didn't, it was. It was they right didn't promote the end. him in the movie, I think, if I remember correctly, because he's kind of he's only in a little section of it. Okay. Uh, and I think it was like a surprise that that character. Was okay. That I, don't, character, I don't know. I think he's in a lot of the movie, isn't he? Oh, it? yeah. Once he's introduced, he's in the tail end, right? For, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but um, in the original movie, that's a, like a beloved character. It's a slightly different. Um, I think they were keeping that a little bit under wraps. I could be wrong on that, but Ant-Man. Who directed Ant-Man? Peyton Reed. Peyton Reed, that's right. Um, well, he said came from a TV background, yep. so they're doing the Russo approach of yep. getting it, and what they also did technically for uh, and I think he did Dark World. Fine, because he was probably handed half a movie and said, "Made it, make it work." See, um. I would, I would give cut him more slack, but then he's had two movies in this series since that he made without the Edgar Wright thing oh, I before he him. Did all of them, didn't he? And so it's like, yeah, it's kind of the same thing, but worse every t- like. I think the second one's my favorite. It's um, not a high bar for me, but yeah, we'll, I do enjoy the we'll second see, one better. We'll see if that holds true. Last time yeah, I watched we'll it was see. on a plane, and I enjoy things on planes a lot more sometimes than I do when I'm in the comfort of my own home. Yeah, my, my Michael Douglas is the, the highlight of at least the first. He doesn't do anything in the third one. He just is there. Yeah. But that second one, he, he was actually used to least One of my least favorite parts in the third one. We'll get there. But <laughs> that, that second one, when he, I think I said, probably said it on the series before, one of my favorite line deliveries in the whole MCU for it's not even that funny, but mm-hmm. it's when it's when Scott is like child size because his suit is malfunctioning and he like flops into the ba- van and yep. has to crawl. He goes, "Hey Junior, how was school? Did you like some string cheese in a juice box?" And then I I just lost it. Yeah. I was like, I don't know why it's so funny to me, but it's just Michael Douglas treating him like a little kid. That's also like the best parts of that movie is them making fun of Mini Scott Lang. Like yeah. it, it's so funny. Um, this one, I think my standout is the crew, uh, the Smelchin, um, is it T.I.? T.I., yeah. <coughs> and, and, and Michael Pena. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say his character name. Yeah, Michael yeah. Pena. Um, anytime they're on screen, I'm having a blast. 
Uh, I feel like they those sh- are the parts of the movie that feel like I grew right too. Yeah, exactly. They're they're Ense- quippy, fast ensemble. Quick, yep, ensemble exactly. Um, where it's all in the dialogue. Oh, also, then, this is my. But then fa- Darren's in this movie. <laughs> this is my. This is my favorite um, Stanley cameo. I think so far. What was this one again? It's Luis's end story at oh, the bar, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Uh, I was, I was going to say what I think. What I think about the whole movie and like structure, like those Luis stories, feel like the Edgar Wright. Yes. Part. Like that literally is an Edgar Wright thing, and it's like I'm. That's the two best parts of the movie, and comedy wise, like it really is like having. The, the sweeping shots and the this person knows this person, you know, the six degrees of Kevin Bacon thing. Yeah. And then how, like, he's talking and they're all mouthing on. That's fun. Mm-hmm. That's actually pretty fun. And I'm glad it's only twice and not seven times because they can never and I remember the have, internet let something be. obsessing over, like, why aren't you putting these in the other movies? Why isn't this continuing? Like, I would love, now that the Stan Lee's gone, that we get recaps from Luis at the end. I'm like, no, we would hate it after two movies. Yep. Like, it works perfectly in this one. They don't overdo it. And the scenes are fun, quick, and they're perfect for what they are. But when the internet was like, keep them going, no, do not do that. Like, do not run this joke dry. Do not family guy this. Hold on, hold on. What joke? The, the Luis, Luis yeah. telling stories. And he oh, the story okay, and okay, okay. You, his name. He yeah, was saying course. people online wanted that at the end of every single MCU, subsequent MCU movie, like, yeah. where he recaps something, and it's like you'd get sick yeah, of that. Yeah, or like instead like, of the right Stanley away. cameo, they check in with Luis every now and then, and he runs them down. He's their informant or something. It's like, no. We don't need any more of this. This two times, perfect. That's all you need. Let I, him do other things. I do think that the whistling joke is funny. Yeah. <laughs> don't whistle, and then he's. Whist- there are parts of this movie that are funny. Yeah. I think I think most of the comedy attempts hit with me. And generally, Paul Rudd is a likable guy in oh, this yeah. movie. Oh yeah. I was upset I mean, when they cast him. Gen- not me. Generally, knowing Paul- knowing the character of Scott Lang, I'm like good casting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know anything, but yeah. I just remember thinking like. That guy from, like, I Love You Man or whatever it is, it's like, that guy, because I didn't know anything about the comics, but it's like, because as a kid, the little I knew, I saw and knew about, like, the Avengers mm-hmm. stuff, I loved Ant Man. And when he wasn't in the first Avengers, I remember, you know, high schooler me thinking, like, why isn't Ant Man in this? I love Ant Man. <laughs> He's busy beating his wife, Jared. That's what uh, Hank Pym is kind of iconically known for in the comics, uh, beating Janet a couple times. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh,. <laughs> But then when they cast Paul Rudd, I'm like, are they going to, because with their track record, are they going to make him this, like, stupid, silly idiot boy? And yes. But he's not, he's not different, he's, though. But he's, he's not dumb. He's, he's not dumb, and he's charming. Yes. Yeah, it, after watching the movie the first time, I was indifferent. After watching it with him that second time, I was like, no, I like Paul Rudd. Uh, I really like Paul Rudd. I also, the little girl who plays Cassie is so good in this movie. I really wish we got more of her performances. Yeah. <laughs> I get why we didn't, obviously. You're my yeah. best friend. Abby, I'm so yeah, ugly. Movies, I love both it. Movies, she is like a beacon in these movies. She is so good. Because she is in the second one. She is, yep. But, but then, then she they, gets blipped. She get, yeah, well, well, she gets... Wait, does she get blipped? Or, yeah. yeah. She's, she stays behind, right? Yeah, the she's older. Because she, he, he's the... She's the first person that he goes and visits because her name isn't on the wall when he checks. He runs to see if she's there, and yep. when she's not, he no, she, she oh yeah, she's yeah, he goes wall, to yep. the house, and it's a different a- actor because they have to age up. But yeah. then they cast Catherine Newton. Catherine Newton. For well, the I third love one. Catherine Newton. Yeah, I adore Catherine Newton. I'm not fond of her in that movie, uh, but everything else I've seen her in, amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go back quite a bit in the conversation. Uh, Tony Collet is the mom. Colette. 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 I was, see, I was gonna okay. say Tony Colette or Cat. Not, and then not it's got Catherine, Catherine O'Hare. I thought it was one of those two. It's got super bad dude. Because Tony Colette is in all the horror. McLovin. Yeah. Christopher Mintz. Oh Plus. yeah, he's mm-hmm. his best friend. And Dave Franco. And Dave Don't Franco. Forget Dave That's Franco. Such a, oh, such a good cast. Dave such Franco is so damn. Funny. Funny. He is in everything. My, one of my favorite parts of uh, <laughs> I got an ivory plated cowboy dolls. <laughs> Mad legal. No, none of you have seen Scrubs, so that doesn't no. make any I've sense. No, every episode of Scrubs. Okay, he's Cole in oh, Scrubs. Oh, I'm well aware. Uh, I'm funny. also one of the weirdos who liked that last season. He is the only <laughs> reason to watch that last season. I like that last season. And I just think about it as a different show. Yep, uh, that's how you got to do it. How many times have I said that to you? Med um, School is a different show? Yes. Okay. Also, let's give it up for uh, Bobby Carnival in this movie. Carnival. Uh, 
Cannibal. Or is, or is it Cannavale? Uh, but uh, more importantly, Judy Greer for her reprising her role as the same character she's been playing for the last ten years. Yeah, at uh, all and eight she's, minutes of screen and she's, time. She's great at it every time. Like I love seeing Judy Greer in a thing. She's always mom or best friend. It's the only roles. She Not plays. an adaptation. She's. She's a waiter in one scene, and Nick Cage is unintentionally creepy and feels bad, and it's a really uncomfortable scene we just purposely. We just don't know she has kids at home, Jared. That's right. <laughs> she is a mom. Judy Greer. Yeah, cool. she's um, Cassie's ex. Uh, not Cassie's ex. Cassie's mom in the movie. Um, really? His ex, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's mom in everything. Uh, the Halloween franchise, Jurassic World, this, or best friend. If we go all the way back to Sabrina, she did that until she was age of being mom. That's fair. The, the whole structure of it to the movie bugs me because it is paper thin. I'm like, oh, he doesn't want his daughter to, to end up like his wife, so he gets this, <laughs> this random guy he stalks for a year or whatever to do it. But then it, he's like, well, I have like a week <laughs> to train this guy to use yeah. a suit while my daughter knows everything. It's like she lists off all the reasons she should, and I go, yeah, that's a much better idea. And then when he's like, no, no, no. And it's like, well, why don't you do it? Well, I can't do it. The suit took too much out of me. Oh, okay. What did the suit do to you? No, nope, they don't tell us. It's dropped. He's just old. <laughs> and it's just like it took, the suit took too much out of me. What if it was? Why is this not ever brought up again? Like, and the, you're putting this guy into the suit. It's like, well, what's the suit going to do to him after using it's it a bunch? He doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, and when. Well, and see, the, my <laughs> issue with all that, like, I understand his reasonings behind it and all that. After they complete their mission, everything's done. Then he's like, I'm making you a suit, by the way. Like, I know we're done with this very important mission. The only thing we needed to get done, but here's a suit. Go do what you want with it, I guess. It's one of those (laughs) things where it's just like it's shoehorned in because Marvel knows that it needs to have the wasp in it to play to the fans and yada, yada, yada. The the other thing with the the, what we said, like, if they're not on the same side the whole time, Mm -hmm. that gives you that that, that's your reason right there for why she where hope just doesn't do it. Yeah, because they're they're not on the same side. So then, when she goes to them, it makes sense why he'd say, "No, I'm not doing that to you." Mm-hmm. But if she's there the whole time and in the planning stages and knows the building and all this stuff, yep. it's like, yeah, that's a much better idea. Yeah, why take your chances on a random dude? Yep, that he stalked. Yeah, I have a, a very funny story from my time at Motor City Comic Con that peripherally per- peripherally relates to this. Did I say that right? Yeah. yeah you got okay. There. So, <laughs> Colby Smolders was at MCC or MC3. Yeah, MC3. Uh, apparently, her husband is a huge nerd, according to her. I can't remember who her husband is. So, when she got cast as Maria Hill or was in, mm-hmm. in the process of getting cast, <laughs> apparently, it was around the time that they were talking about Ant- making Ant Man. So. She, he, apparently he was bothering her a ton. Are you the wasp? Are you the wasp? No. Oh, I bet you're the wasp. <laughs> it was so... Honestly, <laughs> would have been a great choice for the wasp. Uh, I mean, Evangeline Lilly is fine, but... I mean, because cause she was already Maria Hill. I mean, yeah, obviously. I just really like... I Yeah, she, she's, <laughs> she's yeah. funny. And Canadian. Tragically Canadian, as it yeah. was. Yeah, but yeah, I also forget like Ant Man was like one of the first movies they were gonna make. Uh, this Shang Chi power pack, which nobody knows what that is, hey. Um, but they had the rights to it, and that was gonna be one of their first movies. Um, and then they just that went been, a different route. That would have um, been a weird start. But that was Kevin Feige's initial start. He's I think he wanted his first one to be Shang Chi. <laughs> then he was gonna do Ant Man. Power pack is like a passion project for him. I'm surprised we've never seen them in anything referenced ever. Um, but yeah, this was supposed to be like one of the first ones in the MCU. Uh, it feels like it. Yeah, uh, it I think really it was does. Probably written back then, <laughs> <laughs> or at least the initial script. <laughs> I'm still thinking about like the whole story of this, like just how stupid it is. It's like this is the most. I still don't think it's the paper worst thin thing version of it. I think um, Solo is probably the worst version of it, in my opinion. <laughs> um, that is a fair point. Because we got to hear a lot of what happened and why it got switched around and the reasons. Uh, it seemed very are you, are you saying director changes? Yes. Not uh, Superman 2? Would you throw that mm-hmm. in the mix? Because <laughs> they, they had two-thirds of that movie filmed. 
And I, then when Donner started, start, you know, was going to continue that, they're yeah. like, no, get you out of here. Let's get Fleischer in here because we can control him like a puppet. And this movie is infinitely worse. Yeah. The way it ended up. I don't know. I like the Donner cut. You know, That's I would, what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh. I literally said it was infinitely worse the way they did it. Oh, I thought you meant the way it ended up with yeah, the Donner. No. The way Donner no, right. Donner got screwed. Yeah, he did. No like, wonder he's so bitter it's, about everything. It's, it's one thing if the first movie does well and he's in pre-production and they they ax him. That's one thing. They had most. They, they filmed it back to back, didn't they? They had most of it done. So and then they axed him. To answer your question, Jared, yes, I do think Solo was the worst one uh, because they took two of my favorite filmmakers, uh, got rid of them, and I was so bummed. And then they announced, "Oh, hey, we're bringing in Ron Howard." I'm like. Good. Rod Howard knows how to make a movie. This man made some of my favorite films growing up. All faith is in Ron Howard. And then the movie came out, and there's like three scenes I love in it. The and train scene. The li- train scene. Literally uh, killed the Star Wars franchise for a good yeah. number the spin-off, of years. The spinoffs. Um, I would love to see more Lando. I think Donald Glover did phenomenal yeah. in the movie. Donald Glover does good at um, everything. You're not wrong. Uh, I'm still waiting for his prowler. Legit I want still I want to, I Seven want him, years of waiting. I want him to be brought back to do his Deadpool show. I want to see what that looked like. Hey, man, I got to tell you, he was Prowler in Across the Spider-Verse. Oh, that's it's true. It's not been really seven Keep years. Keep it alive. <laughs> I mean, he is kind of one of the low-key reasons we have Miles Morales. Like, not a main reason, uh, but one of them. Was Miles Morales not around when they did Homecoming? I don't know when so, Miles yeah, Morales Miles started. Morales uh, was around when they did Homecoming. Um, but back in the day, uh, Brian Michael Bendis, I believe it was, um, wanted, he got Spider-Man, but he wanted to do something that his daughter could, like, resonate with and stuff, because I believe mm-hmm. she's mixed race. Um, and then he saw the episode of Community, where Donald Glover stands up, yep. and he's stretching, and he's in the, uh, Spider-Man outfit, uh, the sleep, um, sleepwear. And that's who he loosely based Miles on, design-wise. Is Donald Glover from Community? Um, okay. Yeah, didn't and like 2010, 2011, years. somewhere. Yeah, that's right. 2011. He could yeah. campaign yeah, for. He campaigned Miles. really hard to be. Miles. Was it like 2018 or 2019? No, it couldn't be that. What late. year for the first Spider Verse? No, for the first like Miles Morales when he came into existence. Oh, oh no, early on. That's when Marvel um, the talk- Ultimates was first released. So yeah, 20, 2009. Ah, okay, that makes more sense. I think Maybe. I know it's a well relative. That's when Community I know started. it's a relatively recent yeah. thing. Miles Morales. I have his first issue. I really wish that we would get a. 2011. I'm a little bit early, so yeah, 2011. Okay, I really wish that we would get an MCU Miles Morales. It'd I don't, be great. I don't well, they know if I, it. I don't know if I would like it, but I want. I want it. I have my input in for either Caleb McLaughlin from Stranger Things. Or there's this other kid in Cobra Kai who I think would be really good for Miles Morales. Or they just have Shamik Moore do it. Uh, I think he's a little older now. I think he's like what? You think so? I want to say he's like 24, 25. I don't know. I mean, they could always do an older one. Yeah, but also, I guess, yeah, if you're doing it in relation to um, 29, uh, to Donald Glover. Uh, you want, okay, you that want, is kind of old. You want a bit of an age difference between Donald Glover and your Miles Morales. Because... Okay, yep. because Prowler... And, and you want, you kind of want to see that relationship build as he's younger, too, probably. Um, yeah. Back to Ant-Man. Something yeah. less interesting to talk about. <laughs> so <laughs> I'd I rather talk about a fictional Miles Morales movie. <laughs> I, got, I gotta ask it. Nick, you're the one that knows the comics the best of all sure. of us. Um, how is this compared to how Ant-Man plays out in a comic book? Oh, I was never an Ant-Man guy. Um... Grow up, <laughs> growing knowing uh, Hank Pym's history. Uh, I never really put much time into Ant Man, but I always liked Scott Lang when he would pop up in other people's books. He was always very lighthearted, um, a little bit closer to I think the Tony Stark character, where he's a little bit more arrogant, um, a lot of quips and things like that. Mm. But I like the more endearing version of the character where you can actually like him a little bit. Uh, but my impression of Ant-Man has always been kind of Hank in this movie. We're arrogant, stubborn, pig-headed a little bit. Uh, always thinks he's right. What if this That's why Ant-Man created Ultron in the first place. 
That's right. Yeah. I, I knew yeah, that. Yeah, Ultron's an Ant-Man creation. <laughs> what if this would have been... Uh, I can't remember. the What's Hank's actor's name? Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas. What if it was Michael Douglas's movie and not Paul Rudd's? I mean... That would be an interesting yeah, thing. It would. Yeah, I like Michael Douglas in this movie. And that's that, the reason that, we got the de-aging scene. Is they were gonna, oh. they were gonna do it? I actually don't think it's that bad in this one. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's weird. I, it, it's worse in the next movie, I think. Yeah, I think it's worse in the next movie. I think it's and in uh, Endgame. I think this is some Endgame of the better de aging. I don't remember de aging in Endgame. It's when they're when they're go to the past. Yeah, and it's a cameo because it's supposed to for young because it's like of course he'd be there. Yeah, but it's like, oh, this looks bad. Yeah, same character. Uh, it's Hank Pym that we see. Uh, mm. But yeah, the, like the long, flowy hair he has in Endgame. Just, it's and rough. his mouth's doing yeah. this. But yeah, I, I think it's actually much better in this one. Uh, and they made sure of that because they were going to do a Hank Pym spinoff show uh, with Michael Douglas and DH him for the entire thing. Uh, but then they realized it looked good in a scene. It's probably not going to look good. <laughs> what, you mean they can't resurrect someone from the dead like they did Grand Moff Tarkin? Oh... Does he? I didn't. I, think, I don't even think the Tarkin stuff is bad in that movie. I didn't notice it at oh. first. Like I forgot that he was dead. So and then if I was you watch like, some of the behind the scenes stuff for that CG, you give it a little bit more leeway for what they were trying to go for, because uh, they're not trying to go for Peter Cushing. Mm-hmm. They're going for Peter Cushing specifically as Tarkin in the couple of scenes. So they didn't use like anything of his other history, because like his face looks completely different than it does as Tarkin, uh, mm-hmm. and I never knew that. They're like, yeah, like they purposely sink in his cheekbones and stuff to make him look more menacing. Um, but for me, it's the Leia stuff in that movie. That's really, Didn't, really It's bad. one shot. It's so bad. Her mouth is floating around Didn't, like oh, crazy. Mean, oh, it's so Didn't bad. Didn't they construct that from like a bunch of different Carrie Fisher roles? Mm-hmm. Okay. They literally just didn't need to have her turn around. She could have just said, Hope, we all know who she is from um, the back. <laughs> um, I literally think that they didn't need to include that scene to begin with. I know it's fan service. I know it's awesome. I don't think they needed well, they, it. Well, they needed it to make you think the rest of the movie was better than it was. Oh, that movie's not good. <laughs> I love. I like that movie. I <laughs> that's think an are, interesting take on that. No, that, that's, that makes sense. That's what a lot of the internet thinks. It's like, oh, they put the cool Darth Vader scene at the end to make you forget about everything else you just watched. Um, because no one in that movie is very memorable, and we don't really know them. Donnie Yen. We know I remember Donnie Yen, and that's only because yeah. I love Donnie Yen. And now there's a show <laughs> and we know yeah. about yeah. what's his name? Uh, and or dude. Uh, yeah, and Diego, or dude. Diego, Diego Luna's the Thank actor. You. I don't remember. Ca- the... It's like Cassius or something. Yeah, sure. But like Cassie now that Andor. <laughs> now that he has a show, it's different. That doesn't make the movie better. No. But it, still, it's like you get to the end of that movie, sure, and it's like sure everyone loves that movie. It's like it's not that. Good. Like I said, I enjoy that movie, are you but sure it's it, such a mess. Are you sure it doesn't kind of do what the what uh, Clone Wars did for the prequels? Clone Wars doesn't fix the prequels because Clone Wars is better than the prequels by far. It does kind of fix the prequels though. Ah, it doesn't it fills make in the better gaps mo- that are there. I feel like but that doesn't make the movies Endgame better. Fixes Dark World. That make that just makes the show. It makes it better if you watch it after you watch Clone Wars. It's one of those things where it, it, the movies have to do a good enough job on their own because there was nothing else. And having the, the show fill in gaps doesn't make the movie better. It fixes the continuity and story of the universe, but all it does is say, hey, this show is doing a better job than the movie. And that, that's what I take away because the movie's still the same. Those prequels suck. I love them. They suck. I can't even say that. I don't even love them. The first one is my favorite. Same. Wow. Nostalgia. Nobody has a sense of emotion. Complete, oh, no, they don't. Complete Everybody's talking nostalgia. like this the entire time. Complete yep. nostalgia. Not everyone. Natalie Portman is pretty. Yippee! That's, that's, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> and then there's all the racial stereotypes. Those have emotions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, you don't like Watto? At Comic Con, there was a uh, there was a group of people that were paid to drive around like little remote control droids and stuff. There was a, a pit droid in one of the land speeders. That was so fun. The best thing to come out of the prequels were all the video games that came out for the prequels. There were so many great games because those movies came out. Uh, the Pod Racer, one of the best games for the N64. It was a launch title, too, wasn't it? Yeah, I believe so. Pit Droids, one of the worst games for the N64, but it existed. Uh, I mean, Battle for, <laughs> Battle for N- Naboo yeah. was pretty good. Uh, Bounty Hunter. Love that game. People like the Battlefront games. Battlefront games. All I of like Revenge uh, of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith. I like the yeah. co- the computer game that was based on Episode One. 
Like, it was literally called The Phantom Menace. Yeah, as much as I hate love Star Wars, uh, I hate the movies. I love everything else about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but going back to him. Uh, yeah, so. Um, anyway, and, we, and, we, 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 we talked to, about. We, we don't have to wait much longer for the MCU to cross over with Star Wars. Let's just be honest. I'm waiting for it to cross over with Doctor Who. They've already referenced Star, Star Wars in the, the MCU in yeah. Civil War. Mm-hmm. They can't cross it's over. True. I think they mentioned it quite a bit throughout the MCU. Um, but actually, canonically, we can see Doctor Who in here. That'd be great. In the comics, it's canon. Same with Star Trek, it's all the same universe. And I think Indiana Jones. Wow. All connects. And wow. Elf. I love expanded universes when they are crazy like that. Um, you could never cross over with Doctor Who. That's a the comics, at least, are an IDW product. Fair. We're talking live action. Jake. Um, actually, we probably can't because Christopher Eccleston. Darn. <laughs> oh, shoot. We just don't want him back. <laughs> Disney does kind of own Doctor Who now, or at least the broadcast rights to it. Yeah. <laughs> and Shooty's on it. Shooty. I love Shooty. Same. I need to finish sex education. You I, should. I shouldn't, <laughs> from what I hear. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. How far in are you? I think uh, season three. You're in the middle of season three? I think I finished season three. Okay. That's a good season. Yeah. It's the next season that's Exactly. That's rough. what I've heard, which is why I haven't watched it. <laughs> Here, but not to go off on this whole tangent, do it just I'll just say Yeah. Because you and I are talking fin- about it. Yeah. Finish it for the sake of a couple storylines that do end well. Yeah. Most of it is uh, my characters. But there's a couple in there that's like that's a great ending. Yeah. So that's why you stick with it. And trust me, it's a little bit of a chore. And getting back to Ant Man though, like you, oh yeah, you can e- that. <laughs> <laughs> you can even see or hear, I guess, where the like the stereotypical Edgar Wright needle drops would be. Yeah, like this is where he'd put this song. This is where he'd put this song. I, I, I genuinely feel like they tried to make it an Edgar Wright film. 100%. Like m- maybe it got into production a little bit farther than we all think, but they just fail so miserably. Well, and his fingerprints are all over because he was an executive producer and story. And does he get a screenplay credit? I think so. So that's just how involved he was. And then they just, I don't think it's to the effect of they ripped it away from him, but I think it was, he did all that work for like a decade. Yeah. No, I think and he, they just, I think he, I think they all kind of came to the realization it's just like, this is not working out for anybody involved. <laughs> or they went and saw an Edgar Wright movie and was like, that's not going to fit in our universe. Which is funny. You wait a couple years, and then they let the weirdo directors make Marvel movies for a second. It's like, oh, imagine if you would have just let him do it. Yeah, and I love people from the UK way more from, than what from weirdo New director? Zealand. What weirdo directors? Taika. Like when Taika came. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> and you are, Taika, is, Taika is a completely different thing than Edgar Wright, though. Actually, I would say they're very similar in how they're perceived by people. That's fair, but they're very completely different. different. But I would actually have a beer with Edgar Wright. I'd like I would love them to see the thing as um, Darjeeling, Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson. Where like you can tell one of their movies by looking at it. They make very indie esque movies, even though a lot of times they get some budget. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have their diehard fan bases. <laughs> I would put the, the the reason I put Taika and Edgar in the same category in this instance is because they are weirdo directors when it comes to this kind of stuff. So having Taika make an MCU movie at the time was like, oh, you're giving this guy the What We Do in the Shadows and Hunt for the Wilder People guy a Marvel movie? A Thor movie? A character that we've been watching for like seven years at this point? And it's well, been I very mean, and how did that stiff. work out for you, Nick? I don't hate it any more than the other ones. I just don't like it any more than the other ones. <laughs> so that's what we're Until you get to the one after that. Yeah. I try to forget that one exists, Jake. I think there's only three Thor movies. <laughs> okay, I'd that's buy what that we're that's what we're saying. Yeah. Where they basically handed him Taika a movie, said make the movie, but the last 20, 30 minutes has to bring it back to an MCU thing mm-hmm. and connect it. And he said okay, and then just they. What was that? They, what did he say okay. again? Hold on, I didn't hear that. What did he say? Okay. Okay. Yeah. But it's funny how it's only like two years after this that they started doing that because I'm not saying John Watts has much of a voice compared to like Tyker Edgar yeah. Wright but even he put a little bit of a different spin on Spider-Man's yeah. look compared to a normal NCU movie and then that same year you had the second Guardians you know Ryan Coogler came in for Black Panther 
Yeah, they were actually making like, like filmmakers and not TV guys. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's funny how they started to go in that direction and then they kind of drop it. Yeah. Because now they're kind of back to, okay, we just got to keep making them because one of these will be good. Maybe. One of them was good. Two of them were good. Post Endgame. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll say two. I see more, but we'll see in my rewatch because I've only watched a lot of those one time. Uh, a lot, and of it the, was also during a weird time in the world. So, yes, who knows where my head was at that point? <laughs> I also, I also think that a lot of the reason that a lot of those don't work so well is because they overwork their artists, and well, it's because they spread everything out. Yeah, because when you have four movies a year, you have the same team, mm-hmm. and you might outsource some of the special effects like they always do, but now you have this big one, you have. X's budget mm-hmm. instead of two movies or three movies now it's four movies and three shows so to stretch it not only are overworking them you just don't have the time anymore well it's not even like just that but like all the movies they released in 2020 they didn't didn't they didn't take that same slate and just adjust it they crammed everything together but you're saying the ones they moved from 2020 to yeah. 2021 so yeah instead of moving those 2021 ones down the line they just kind of pushed everything together and then it's, everybody's oh, yeah. working on everything at the same time. Because <laughs> it was, oh, we haven't put anything out in a yep. full year. People are and itching next for year it. we got, what, what, four of them next year? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's shows. Don't. Yeah. Two shows. What shows? WandaVision and... Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no next no. year. Next year, 2025. Oh, next year. I'm sorry. I thought we were still talking about their 2020. No, no, 2025, oh. we have the four movies that we've mentioned. And see, and I don't... Two shows? What I two think shows? we have... <laughs> What two shows? We have Agatha. Okay. So, like... And there's another one that I can't remember. Oh, Daredevil. Oh, oh I'd right. watch that. Yeah, oh. Stuff's coming out about it, and it's looking really good. I'm still worried that's they're gonna, doing 22 episodes. Yeah. That's yeah. going to be the dude from... The whole cast is coming back, I think, except for maybe Foggy. Which is fine, because I didn't like him as Foggy. Give me John Favreau back from the Ben Affleck Daredevil isn't, movie. Isn't yeah, dude, isn't, Favreau was Foggy Nelson. Isn't the dude that played Foggy that gross guy? The gross comedy guy, J. No, T.J. T. Miller, no. He was in um, Deadpool. Deadpool. Okay. Who also, Weasel. Another weird name. Yeah, he plays Weasel in Deadpool. Okay. No, it is, I can't think of his name. He was in The Mighty Ducks. He's one of the Bash brothers in the Mighty Ducks. Oh, oh. yeah. Um, that's all. The only other thing I know him from. <laughs> Is he Fulton or Dean? I think he's Fulton, if I remember correctly. Okay, Fulton yeah, Reed. He, yeah, because he came back for the Mighty Ducks show. Yeah, um, I still need yeah. to watch. Yeah, that. I never watched it. Yeah, I just all know. the stuff with Bombay is great. So what and is Lauren that? Graham's Have doing Lauren Graham, and I do not like Lauren Graham. See, you talk about <laughs> you talk about Judy Greer being like that mom figure. That's what Lauren Graham. Always is. Yeah, but Lauren Gilmore Graham's Girls. the version of it I don't like, and Judy Greer is the version <laughs> that I do like. Like, I don't know what it is about Lauren Graham, just mom energy. Yeah. And everything she's in. She reminds me of a couple of my cousins who also give off big mom energy. Um, that's why I always think of her as mom. Like mom <laughs> energy or big mom energy? Um, just mom energy. Like the energy is big or the mom is big? How did you the word that? The energy is big. Okay. Yes, the they energy They give off big is mom big. energy, I'm like... What, yeah, are they, no. like, bigger bone? No, or? not big mama energy. So, okay. <laughs> I'm not talking. Did, no, no <laughs> not Tyler Perry. <laughs> no, that's not Tyler, Tyler Perry. Isn't it? Big Mama's house is, um, I that was, Oh, no, that's Medea. What's Big Mama? Uh, oh. Martin Lawrence. Martin there we Lawrence, go. Not, yeah. yeah, not Tyler Perry. Martin Lawrence. Why could I only think of his name from Bad Boys? <laughs> <laughs> What's so, his name? <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, have you read anything about Agatha that would indicate that it's, like, a WandaVision two or something like that i haven't really read much about agatha except for it's had like nine <laughs> title changes <laughs> i don't even i think it's house of agatha now instead of the house of harkness or that's a shame because Welcome i do like agatha that actrix, actress actress katherine hahn yeah she's phenomenal and everything i for better or worse i do like wandavision yeah i, I know it's not ant-man but i was excited week to week and that's probably the last time i was excited week to week for a marvel show mm. and that was the first one technically I was that way for Loki. I'm a big fan of the Loki series. I, have, I That's what I picked when we covered like our they, favorite ones. They but disconnected it enough from the MCU that I was really enjoying it at the time. I will say also that the, the trailers I have seen for uh, Deadpool and Wolverine look pretty funny. Yeah, I'm also excited to see what they do with Ant-Man in that movie. 
Um, cause oh, because of the skull thing? The giant Ant-Man body thing is a old man Wolverine thing, I believe. And so is the villain, I think. Um, but maybe we get to see the Hulk in a symbiote, like Venom. Uh, that would be wild. Because that's a thing in that uh, series. Um, there's a lot of crazy stuff in that series. Uh, so I'm kind of hoping we get to see like a blind Hawkeye driving around all the time. Do you ever think they, uh, if they ever get the rights to Venom back into the MCU, do you ever think that they do like a, what's it called? Sinister Six. No. Uh, King in Black, I think is the name of it. A? I don't think they ever get Venom back. Okay. I think the animated Spider-Man movies are doing too well. No matter how bad our Madam Webs and Cravens do. Um, Wait, I forgot that Craven thing was a thing. Yeah. Did it come out? Nope. No. Soon. Uh, I think Lord and Miller are doing God's work over there and keeping Spidey in Amy Pascal's pocket. Uh, so I don't think we'll ever get Venom. Um, and then also, no. <laughs> <laughs> Too interesting of a story for them. I was going to say, that's, it's such an interesting, they like... They handle it like they did um, Demon in a Bottle, where you get one scene of Tony Stark drinking, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the director of Deadpool and Wolverine? Is it Sean Levy? That sounds right. Okay. I like Sean Levy. I feel like I might yeah, actually I like, like this. I like Night at the Museum. Yeah. And... For how movies. for how bad Cheaper by the Dozen kind of is, I enjoyed it as a kid. Yeah, I still think it's well made, even though it's terrible. <laughs> but it's Richard Jenkins. I love I Richard know. Jenkins. I do feel like I'm going to actually like Deadpool and Wolverine. You just like Ryan Reynolds that much. That's probably what will no, I, but spur I it on. I think that's but what, I didn't like the really like the other two Deadpool movies. You like the second one better I than the first okay one. I was okay with the second one, but the first one was not just... not very good. No, they're not. Ryan Reynolds is charming. It is what it is. He's also my least favorite part of the second movie. There's a lot going on in that second movie, Yeah, there's too. a lot of good stuff going on in that second movie. Not, not like Ryan Reynolds. But also, um, at that point, they weren't actually in the MCU. I might like it better because it is more MCU, which, which is, is a crazy w- weird thing to say. Yeah, for somebody who uh, is not really an MCU stan. <laughs> okay, we need to stop. Stop recording so you can go wash your mouth out. So <laughs> like, that sounds like a sentence I would have said because I'm no, not a fan like, of those Deadpool I, movies. I, I, the first one just felt I'm like... I'm turning Jake, not the other way around. I guess. <laughs> Judas. I think the first one was just kind of like a... SNL let's, skit. Let's be... Yeah, there's let's no, be... There's no plot at let's, a certain point. Let's, let's be an R-rated movie because we can, but then we're not really going to use the R rating at all. Yeah. And then the second one, they actually have emotional stakes that get kind of reversed at the end, like usual. Also, but why wasn't Vanessa, never mind, Lady Death? It makes more sense if she just becomes the embodiment of death, because that's a whole thing with Deadpool, whatever. Uh, they did what they did. That's right. He's in love with her, then too. Then we could have brought he? her into the MCU with Thanos. <laughs> I love that love triangle in and the now we, and, and now we just get Harry Styles, and who the heck wants that? That's another thing. Like, yeah, the, um, the post credit scene for this movie wasn't the greatest, but at least it connected to a movie that we knew was actually going to happen. And I missed that about the post credit scenes when they actually teased the thing coming up. I oh. blame James Gunn's five post credit scenes in Guardians 2 for that. <laughs> you mean the, uh, the C- Civil War? Pro- yeah. That was just a trailer for Civil War, though, wasn't it? No. Yeah, but at least it was about the next. It was a scene from Civil War. It was just the Bucky in the clamp thing. And then uh, him saying, I know a guy. I, I wasn't yeah. paying I know that much guy. attention to it at that point. <laughs> and I get it connects kind of because of Sam and the I know a guy stuff, but it was still hey, nice to connect it to the universe. Tic Tac is a great name, though. I will say that. Yeah. So, you know one thing we don't talk about with Marvel? What? At least I've noticed that we haven't talked about it in a while. Music. I feel like when the MCU started out, we were... I was really taken with a lot of the scoring, but since uh, Avengers, probably, it's just kind of just become nothing. I think it actually picks up in next week's movie, um, but I agree with you for this movie. Um, I barely remember anything music-wise about this movie outside of know. the the party scene when he's really small. Like, I kind of remember the music before the record scratch a bit, um, but like. There's no suspenseful, like, um, no, great. lighthearted <laughs> chimes or anything. Like, it's just 
very <laughs> boring. Now, granted, like I said, I, this feels like a needle drop movie and not a a scored movie, but still, like, even in all the movies previous to this, like, it just makes me want to take all the fun of Baby Driver, <laughs> put it on this movie, and then we have a good, really fun heist movie without Kevin Spacey that we can watch. <laughs> but we don't have that. Instead, we have one with Kevin Spacey if we want to watch something good. Uh, <sighs> can we <laughs> end on that thought? No. <laughs> We go back I to the. I brought up Kevin Spacey multiple times in multiple episodes of this podcast. I'm still thinking back to to that Civil War scene that they put at the end of this, and it's mm-hmm. like, it's li- I know it's literally there to connect it, and yeah. that it is in Civil War, and I know that's next week, but it's also like, why did they need to get Scott? There was no reason other than to have him. We'll talk about that next week, but I just keep thinking about it, like, that's literally they just, just needed just, a. Have you ever heard the expression "We just need butts in the chair"? Or it, yeah, in we my just need bodies. In, in my opinion, yeah. At that point, when you're going up against Iron Man, you grab who you can, and a guy that they're not going to be able to see coming, it's probably a good guy to grab. Well, and he <laughs> climbs into Iron Man's suit that is supposed to be. He's watertight. the one that gets Cap his shield back, Jared. Also, we're still talking about Iron Man, right? Like, I mean, I mean, I mean, Iron Man, right? That counts. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you could make the counter argument for why did they have to go get Spider Man? Yeah, he brought a child to a fight. Yeah. Literally. He was to tie everybody up because he can shoot webs from afar and not have to get close. Good it's mentioned man. in the fight. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Yeah. Next week. Next week. Yes. Did he really say that in the fight? I don't remember that at all. We'll talk about it next week. Okay. Oh, should we talk about Darren anymore? Oh, no. um, one of the cool things I like about Darren is when he turns that guy into putty in the bathroom and then just wipes him up with the toilet paper and mm. throws him in the toilet and says... Bye. Bye. <laughs> um, it was like, bye. Especially because we know at the, thanks to Quantum Mania, that guy was just in the Quantum Realm. <laughs> he probably wasn't dead. Because that's what happens to Darren, and he turns into Sludge. <laughs> yeah, I that, will say that the, what's it called, the Hornet suit? Yellow jacket. It's very yeah. intimidating. I, it's very effective. I thought that opinion. that was a good design. Yes, very good. Is um, it? I think if you would have taken Darren Cross, I feel like Darren Cross was trying to be way... Yeah, I think okay. so. Do you I think, think it was just Chris who? Something completely that's, that's that's just who they cast? Yeah. <laughs> do you think it was just who they cast as him? I think he was trying to do Iron Man too. He was trying to do Justin Hammer, but he's not Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying he's a bad actor, but Sam Rockwell has a natural charisma and charm and acting he, chops to pull he, off that kind of smarmy a hole. He also doesn't do a whole lot in this movie. He doesn't. I he's, think he tries to. Like his acting, it seems like he's trying to be like this fun, but like, like he only like while maniacal guy, but it doesn't work. He only like interacts with the main cast like twice, three times. And one of those times, he's throwing a little hissy fit. <laughs> yeah, throwing trains his everywhere. Fits, uh, I also like that. It's a little hissy fit. Yeah. And the casting makes sense because he's he, he got huge with House of Cards yeah. that first season, and everyone's like, "Oh, who is this guy?" I don't think and he's then he bad. just kind of dropped off after. Not that he's not in stuff for success, yeah. but you never, I never hear about no. him anymore. He got real big in like a, a I think a three years. This role, like this. Well, I, I remember his character being mocked so bad. He's like being like a little whiny butthead <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> Your dad didn't love me as a mentor. He's never gonna love you either. Yep. Oh, that whole motivation is so stupid. I know. It's like that's it. Yeah. I would have just taken the greed part. And, and going that, but no, it's yeah, gotta be. Yeah, but stayed where it's like, hey, I want the money. <laughs> Hank Pym built this in a basement with a box of scraps. I mean, they kind of set that up with that first scene about the greed thing, and then it became about oh my feelings. Yeah, which I will say. And we're still hanging on to Hydra at this point too, which is fun. And I will say <laughs> that that uh that scene in the beginning when Hank is going into the the, the company building, and he sits, and what's his name? I think is it Martin Donovan's character. Mitchell Carson, is that the guy from the beginning? Yeah. Asks him, like, is, you know, this, like, smart Alec thing. And he goes, how's your face? He says so it right good. back to him. I go, okay, that's still so funny. So good. I thought Michael Douglas was amazing in this movie. Um, also, one last thing I want to talk about is the marketing for this movie. This movie had some of the most fun marketing. Ants. Ants. Playing that's how Ambo and Ants. Oh, that's Ant-Man. how we started this whole, our very yeah, first I episode. Yeah, I remember. That's a, that's uh, but not only that, but, like, the poster for this uh, was awesome. Oh, this poster? Have you seen this one? Is it the white one? No, this one. 
No, that's a good poster. That's a good poster. <laughs> I want that one. Can we, uh, Jake, is that what you got at Comic-Con? Is, can we get that hung up in here? <laughs> <laughs> the poster was this giant white poster, Ant Man across the top. Oh yeah, he's just oh yeah, I remember that. Run. And in a lot of theaters, they had a giant magnifying glass that came around that you could move and position it over him to magnify the Ant Man. Did it say actual size? I think so, and tiny. But like, there were so many fun like little videos online and thing, including the little ants one um, for a movie that just wasn't amazing. I. But it seemed like the cast had fun. <laughs> The um the DVD release or the Blu-ray release, you know, Best Buy does well. Did, did. um, I talk about that in a second. Um, <laughs> they did the steel books. Mm-hmm. It was a hard drive, like it was shaped like a hard drive. It looked like a hard drive, except yeah. it had a hole right through it, and Ant Man standing on the side of it. It was it, it's really cool. Yeah, I love good marketing. I wish they oh, I I things. have another thing that I want to talk about. Wouldn't it be awesome if the setup for the Quantum Realm in this movie was anything like what we got in Quantum Mania? Like, if they built on what they did here, because I thought, I think this Quantum Realm sequence in this movie is actually pretty interesting. So, <laughs> if I remember correctly. Oh, no. We see. We see what we see in Quantum Mania, but we're not small enough yet. So off in the distance in one of the scenes, I think it's when he's hearing Cassie, you can see a little thing. It's like a little city kind of in the way, 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 way back. That is where Janet is. Yeah, there's um, like an impression or they're, something. They're called the like Micronauts. Or a silhouette or something. There. Um, I can't remember the city's name. This isn't part of the Marvel Universe I'm super versed on. But I think the Micronauts live there. Uh, we see it. I don't think he got quite small enough for us to be where he's walking around in the area. I still think it was microscopic almost for his size. Uh, he still had to go quite a bit smaller to be the size where he could walk around where Janet was to be her size. Um, she was probably still the size of an ant compared to him in that moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was there. We just hadn't gotten fully there yet. No, I mean, like, I want more of what we got in this movie in Quantum Mania. Oh, I thought you were saying the other way around. No, I don't really like what we got in Quantum Mania. Oh, you want it to be kind of more chaos. Yes. <laughs> yes. Nonsense. <laughs> Yeah, but unfortunately, that's not what the comics are. <laughs> it's a weird city with weird ant creatures. <laughs> and the guy from A Good Place hey. is there just speaking English randomly. Don't mock Anthony. 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 Sorry. R. Which, R. him getting shot is actually <laughs> really burnt. funny. <laughs> like, the chances of that are so funny. I understand is that the first official death in the MCU where somebody didn't come back? <laughs> Of a named character. <laughs> he didn't die, but Terrence Howard didn't come back. Yikes. <laughs> neither, neither did Edward Norton. Yeah, double yikes. <laughs> I still have hope for Edward Norton. Howard's off the reservation. They're both going to be in Deadpool Wolverine. I don't think Marvel would even talk to Terrence Howard again. <laughs> Did you just say they're supposed to be in Dead World? No, watch, Everybody's the, watch supposed they'll to be. be in that movie. No, actually, from what I hear, we're getting the Eric Bana Hulk. Which, I'd buy that for a dollar. Which I adore Eric Bana. Uh, one of my favorite comedic actors that never does comedies. Um, watch his Australian stuff. His Australian comedy stuff is really funny. Uh, but anyways, uh, I think he's going to be our Hulk in Dead Gotcha. I'm done talking about it, man. <laughs> We're not like, talking about Ant Man, I guess. I feel like I had some like one like last thing, but I'm just not not remembering it. I just I was on the hate train when it came out, and then I saw it, and I remained on the hate train. Then I watched it with him, and I remained on the hate train, and then watch it here. I was still on the hate train. So how many years later? Nine years later. Nine years of Ant Man hate. When train. is the hate train gonna get thrown through the roof? Never. It's yeah, just a cyclical say. track. So when everything is shrunk, it keeps its like ability to have force, right? Yeah. One swing of that tank on his keychain to his leg should turn his legs to dust because it should have the same force as a tank hitting him in the leg. Uh, that was ruined for me the opening weekend, and every time I watch this movie, I just think he'd be dead. He'd be dead. Every time those keys swing, <laughs> he'd be dead. He'd be dead. It's the way he says, it's not a keychain. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Uh, 
Immersion <coughs> broken every time I see that stupid tank. And it's a bit... It's not great looking when it comes out of the building, no. but it is funny. Yeah. I'll give it that. Yeah. <laughs> Madden Web did that too twice. Threw a tank out of a building? A car, at least. That's how they took down the villain twice in that movie. Oh! <laughs> almost want to see it. You Do it. I've it. seen it ten times. It's so bad. I don't want to sit through it. Oh, <laughs> it's, it goes by in a breeze. <laughs> oh, the last thing is I'm watching this the other night, Ant-Man, and uh, I forgot I forgot that uh, Paxton had a partner. And I go, wait, that's Wood Harris. I love Wood Harris. I don't remember you in this movie at all. And as I'm watching, I'm like, I remember the scene. I don't remember you. You're saying that now, and I don't even remember him being in there. I just watched this movie. <laughs> I just, he's like, because he, he's Gale. That is his character yeah, yeah, yeah. No last name, no rank included, just as Gale. And, the, and it's like, I, you know, like Wood Harris is Remember the Titans. Yeah. It's Julius. That's where I was first introduced to him. Then he's in the Creed movies. Yeah, it's like, every time I see him, he's great. Yeah, I love Wood Harris. And when I when I saw him in this, I go, is that what it, it is? What I, think I had that same thing, but like, and then as soon as the movie was over, I forgot about him. Honestly, a lot of times I forget he, eyes in this movie because yeah, yeah. of Cause the neither of them, the three, yeah. he's the most boring. Yeah, because they don't give him anything to do. He no. just like at least, messes at least with the their has police his car. Baba Yaga stuff going on. That might be the next movie. <laughs> that that was it. Just with uh, yeah. respect for Gale and Wood Harris. Boo it, man! I enjoy this movie. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I fully understand. It's a poorly made movie. Um, but there's enough in there to keep me entertained. See how forgiving I am with these movies? <sighs> anyway. Uh, if you enjoy what we're doing here, uh, walk through the MCU, and as Jared would say, all its glory, um, come on back next Tuesday. Tuesday? Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. Tuesday. Uh, and... Uh, We'll be talking about another one. Until then, where can they find us? You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, the funny TikTok, and X. Formerly known as Twitter. And listen to us on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and hey, if it's YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, ring our bell. Make sure you rate us and like us on all those apps and check out our Groovy website. And so... Uh, next week, we're going to be checking out what I think a lot of people think is uh, one of the best ones. And I wholeheartedly disagree. I disagree, but it's still one of my favorites. I appreciate that it's more comic booky than its predecessors. Uh, we're talking about Civil War, or should we say Avengers 2.5. Um, until then, if you want to stick around with us, uh, if we just keep trudging along and getting more and more phased out, uh, come on back. We'll be here. See you later. Ants. Get his jacket back. It's the first third of the movie. Well, I mean, John Wick did get his puppy back. No, he didn't. From the dead. I was going to say, his dog's dead. But they had to buy the jacket back, I think, from Jack White. Because I think he bought it, and they had to like loan it out from him. Some massive celebrity owns it, and they had to loan it from him. <laughs> I, I have all the interesting I can take with these MCU movies, my guy. Interesting? Where? I have a... <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's get started. <laughs> Full of pickles and nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> I agree, one hundred percent. I love Nick. Here. Why isn't Nick here more Scrub, often? Scru- Bumper buddies. <laughs> Surprises. Watch, it's gonna be like some porno. Dutch. That would be amazing. Since how the building was built in two thousand two. Re-release. <laughs> 11th anniversary. Eleventh <laughs> anniversary of Dutch. <laughs> <laughs>